polite all night, quiet, listening. These broads up here act like they've never been anywhere. I don't know what's wrong with them. You middle-aged broads need Adderall or something. You can't sit still. Gen Z's down here making you look bad. Fucking spilling shit, she won't shut up. My God. I think they're teachers. Anyway, I, um, I had a long day. I'm a parent. I had to take my son to driver's ed at 6.30 this morning. Summer break, any parents out? No. <laughs> We're dying as a species. You guys are polite, but you won't breed. You just wanna TikTok your assholes or whatever you do. I'm a Gen Xer. Any Gen Xers out? Just two of us? All right. The rest of us are out driving. Like we were bred just to Uber these fucks around. <laughs> we're the ones that bring you DoorDash. We take your drunk ass home. Like a generation of shitty babysitters, just like, yeah, I'll call you they. I don't give a shit. <laughs> we don't care about the pronouns, we don't. The boomers act like that's coming out of their 401k. They get so pissed. <laughs> they get so mad about it. They're like, it means multiple people, they. It's like, just say it, Mitch, you old fuck. Who gives a shit? The world is literally on fire around us. And my kids are Gen Z, which is the last one. <laughs> There's no more letters. <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell them to try when we gave them that letter. Like, I know there's a continent of plastic in the ocean, and Canada's always burning now, and there's aliens, and AI, and a global pandemic, and probably a world war starting any second, but do your homework. <laughs> it matters, yeah. <laughs> that e-gym class matters. We had a snow day in February and they had to do that Zoom and I was like, you change your shoes for e-gym class. <laughs> He's looking at me like, are you serious? Check the news. Yeah, it's hard to be a parent, you know? It's a lot of pressure. Like I remember being eight and my dad said to me in passing conversation, whores wear chip nail polish. <laughs> That was the whole sentence. <laughs> and I grew up being like, whore, whore, whore. <laughs> he doesn't even remember that he said it. I think about it every day of my life. I was driving the other day and I looked down and it was chipped and I was like, I have to go home right now. I'm gonna start sucking a dick if I don't go home. I gotta... <laughs> I was playing with it. I was like, you dirty bitch. <laughs> out here embarrassing your family. You better put your gloves on out here. <laughs> so I wonder what am I seeing in my kids that's sticking with them like that and you don't know. But every now and again, as I'm saying it, I'm like, oh, this might be one. <laughs> we went out for sushi and they brought wasabi and my 15 year old son said, that's not real wasabi. And I said, what do you mean? He said, wasabi is $100 a pound. And I go, oh, they stomp on it like it's cocaine. <laughs> and they both looked at me like, what? <laughs> and instead of using that as like an on-ramp to the dangers of fentanyl or something, parenty, I just go, well, when something's pricey, you gotta stretch it. <laughs> And I know that that's stuck. Out of all the shit that I say, that's what's gonna, they're gonna be 40 and adding water to lotion, being like, you gotta stretch it. It's a lot of pressure, you know? 
My son, he's into skateboarding, big skateboarder, and I took him to the skate park, and as we're leaving, this girl his age, maybe a little younger, like 12, rode by on her bike, and she looked at him sexually. <laughs> and then she stuck her butt out at him, and she was like, mm. <laughs> I was like, chipped for sure, right, big time. <laughs> but I thought, this is a teachable moment. It was that obvious. I'm like, I have to say something. So I turn to my son and I go, hey, it seems like girls your age are more mature than you. And he was like, yeah. <laughs> I said, okay, well, I want you to know if she's doing something like that, that's because something bad happened to her. <laughs> that's what I said. <laughs> and that's true, fuck you, that's true. <laughs> if you're 12 and you're trolling the park for dick, something went wrong. <laughs> Some, I don't know if it was your uncle or your algorithm, but something got you. Don't owe me. I'm not gonna let my son get sucked off at the park to make you weirdos feel better. What are you owing? What am I gonna do, find him a bush? No way. <laughs> but maybe I just fucked him up, I don't know. Like now anytime he sees anything sexual, he's gonna be like, oh no, she's sad. <laughs> don't do it, something bad happens, oh no. <laughs> I don't know be a monk now. I don't know how you mess them up, you know. You don't know until later. <laughs> yeah. I have a daughter, too. She's 19, so we're healing. <laughs> it's been a rough decade, you know. <laughs> we were like best friends, and then on her ninth birthday, she just wasn't a fan of me anymore. <laughs> Looking at me like she knows I fucked in a bathroom before. It's like, well, you wouldn't be here if I didn't, so. <laughs> You're welcome, and happy birthday. <laughs> we just had Mother's Day, and I had to buy a card. Mother's Day, buying a card is tricky, right? I'm in, that, I'm in the card aisle way too long, because everyone I pick up, it just doesn't fit, you know? It's just like, you were always there, no. <laughs> You're the wind beneath my wings, no. I feel like all Mother's Day cards should say the same thing and it should just say, I forgive you. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it should say. And that's it, leave it at that. Because we've all fucked up, just I forgive you enough for brunch, that's it. <laughs> I, I forgive you for an hour and a half, that's it. Get in the car quickly. I'm divorced, I feel like it's obvious, but uh, <laughs> I'm divorced. We had someone else who was divorced, me and one other person, who was it? Oh, nice, okay, how long have you been divorced? Oh yeah, good for you. Got out, stayed out, fuck yeah. Um, <laughs> she's like, I had to dick my way out, it was uh, <laughs> Like, I'm not going back into that shit. <laughs> yeah, good for you. You liking it out in these streets? How's it going? 98, things have changed. Yeah. Stay home, yeah, well, thanks for coming out tonight, yeah. <laughs> You're like, we're still underground. <laughs> <It's amazing. laughs> She's like, I can't go above sea level. <laughs> Yeah, I don't blame you. I stay home a lot when I can, too. It's fucking crazy out here. Everybody's eating ass. It's wild. <laughs> a lot of poly people, you know? I don't like them. You notice how poly people are always fucking ugly? You notice that? It's like, how'd you get one person to fuck you? You're getting multiple people? They're the ugliest people you've ever seen. And they got like a harem around them. It's like, what the fuck? Are you drugging these women? They're like the vegans of relationships too. They're always talking about it. They're always bringing it up. It's like, what do you have a fucking brochure? 
You get money for recruiting people in your fucked up shit? I feel like poly people are just people that got cheated on so much that they're like, no, I like it. <laughs> no, actually, I really like it. Now who's the loser? <laughs> Tell that bitch when you see her if you can get a dick out of her mouth, I, I win. <laughs> A lot of poly people, weird shit going on the apps. Do you do the apps? No, I don't. Yeah, good for you. I, um, I, my kids told me I should start dating, which was a sad moment for all of us. I think they're worried about me choking alone on, on food. Because I did, I cho has anyone, ch I choked on watermelon alone and it is terrifying. I don't know if anyone has choked alone. Yes, but I, what scared me is that I didn't do anything. I didn't like get up and start ramming myself into the counter. I didn't call for help. I didn't go to the neighbor. I, I, I didn't know my will to survive was so low. I just sat there like, well, <laughs> this is it. This is what takes me out. Not so sweet, this watermelon. But, but eventually, I, I kind of wiggled it down. Fellas, fellas. I, I put that in my hinge profile. I can wiggle down a little watermelon if I'm choking. No response, no. Um, no, I did. I downloaded Hinge, which is the, um, the, one, the newest one that I'm willing to try. It's not Field or anything where I'm fucking tying a noose or any weird shit you fucking people are into. I don't know. N kneeling on sharp shit or whatever you do. These weird apps. But anyway, I downloaded Hinge. Pretty safe. Pretty basic. Um, although I think I need something that I, I pay for, because this free shit, I'm like dating with ads. It's like, I need to invest a little bit, because it's, it's just, I don't know, the whole app situation, I don't know why we're doing this to each other as a society, really. It's mean, you know, it's very judgy, a lot of rejection, like some bitch is sitting on the toilet shitting and being like, he's not tall enough. <laughs> no. It's like, you're taking a shit right now. I'm gonna judge this man's wonky eye. You're covered in shit. Look at yourself. And these men are getting so much rejection they, and they can't handle it. They're fucking... You know, men, uh, telling a man no is scary. It is. You're risking your life every time. And um, <laughs> they're just racking up all these no's that they were supposed to get in real life. And it's running, you know, the bomb, the bomb is ticking. Some bitch on the toilet's taking one of my no's. That could end my life, bitch. You only get so many no's in a man before he snaps. But you can hear it coming in the profile because they start putting shit like, if you're not ready to get married, don't even look over here. I'm done playing games, bitch. Like, Dude, I don't even know you. This is supposed to be a hello. And I'm scared already. <laughs> I knew you were a whore. Like, what? <laughs> I mean, you're right, but shit. <laughs> it's dangerous, scary. And I noticed that the guys have all the same photos. They all have a, a fish. <laughs> and I think the fish photo is saying, I can provide. <laughs> If it gets real bad, you'll eat once. 
I hope you like bluegill, bitch. That's all you get, a little sunfish for you. We'll split it, we'll split it. <laughs> it's like this big, we'll split it. And then they have a picture of them with a dog. Yes, and I feel like that's saying like, look, I don't kill everything, don't worry. I know I was mad earlier, but now I'm all right. Look at this dog's not even biting me right now. But the one that really bothered me is them with a the kid. And then in the profile, it says, not my kid. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't want you handsy with kids. It's not yours. What are you, a fucking pedophile? What are you, Dan Schneider? Get out of here. Sending me digital roses. I'm like, I need unhinged. That's the app that I want. Someone create that app where it's just your diagnosis. The medications you're on. The side effects to your medications. So when you don't come, I don't feel bad. I'm just like, oh yeah, that's that Lexapro kicking in, no problem. Not offended, I'll see you in the kitchen, no problem. I think with the data, they could match us by our mental illnesses. Like Google knows what we all have. Match us up. They know who our perfect mate is. Just sync us up, Gmail. Someone like match my depression with your OCD so you motivate me. Let's get this closet in order. Put some labels in the kitchen, you know? Don't send a rose, send help. Send, send like a digital Xanax, that would be amazing. While I'm at work, just I hope you're calm. <laughs> hope you're having a good day. I do work during the day. I work with dementia and Alzheimer's patients here in Chicago. That's what I do. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta be nice to elderly people. I love them. You gotta be nice to them because they're like pre-ghosts. <laughs> they're right there. That's a, that's a Yelp review going straight to the gate. <laughs> no, I, uh, my job is I play keep it up with the balloon with them, you know? They're like, kill me! I'm like, come on. Come on, guys, we're having fun. I got like Chattanooga Choo Choo playing in the dining room. They're like, Lord, take me! Like, Come on! We got pasta for lunch, everybody. You get a breadstick, Doris, you love a breadstick. I do fitness with them. And uh, we do it every day and we do, we use a pool noodle for the dumbbell. So this one day, this one day they were being very negative. And I thought, okay, here's what we're gonna do. Try and bring some positive energy in here. We're gonna take our pool noodle and you're gonna yell out a positive word and we're gonna spell it. And you gotta yes and everything they do, you know? And this woman yelled out, come. That's what she yelled out. And I was like, okay, see, now you go. Because I didn't know if it was a no or a you. And I'm like, I'm not about to get fired for this dumb shit that I just came up with 30 seconds ago. It was a no, if you're wondering. It was a... But I wonder what my job programs is going to be for millennials when you guys are in the nursing home. Because you're not going to want to play bingo. I think it's gonna be just handing you an Xbox controller and walking away. <laughs> and it's not hooked up to anything, dude. It's not, it's not gonna have any batteries in it. You're just gonna sit there and pound on the keys for like nine hours. And some little bitch is gonna be vaping in the corner like, you're killing it, yeah. You're on Twitch and everything. And the women are gonna be in a ring light doing a makeup tutorial to nobody. <laughs> Just gluing eyelashes on their forehead. It's 
somebody's gonna be unboxing the same toy every day. And wet ass pussy's gonna be playing in the dining room. It's gonna be a lit nursing home. All right, you guys have been great. Thanks, bye. Thank you. Thank you.